so you're very active in the World Economic Forum. You're very <clears throat> active advising a lot of institutions in blockchain. So how do you cope right now with your hat as CEO and leading a fast-growing company and your mm -hmm. hat as an industry thought leader and as well an influencer and, and the personality? Uh, I think the most important thing is having fantastic people around me that are patient with me and helping um, to making sure that priorities are taken care of in the appropriate order. And uh, yeah, focusing on all the different pieces, great people working with our customers on the development side, but even just making sure the day-to-day -day life gets well organized. Um, Davos is one of those interesting things. I have been, uh, during the World Economic Forum, there's of course, the actual conference, the World Economic Forum uh, Conference, but the whole town turns into an exhibition center. Um, countries are renting buildings and turning it into the Saudi Arabia house, the Ukraine house, the Greek house. Um, company, companies like Accenture, Salesforce, Google, Facebook, Meta now, Microsoft, built huge pavilions to host their customers and share with them um, the latest and uh, greatest innovations and have conversations with them. So the leaders of uh, large IT companies say, well, we, we fly them into a country, they meet two people on a trip in Davos, they meet 42. So huge opportunities to be there. And I had the chance to go six years, I think, six, seven years ago. The first time somebody asked me, do you want to go? I said, well, I'm interested. I'm curious. I'm just trying it out. We hired really good people to help us to get in the right spaces, build alliances. And one of the best advices I got was help out, help others. And I said, well, that comes naturally to me. So let's see what I can do. And um, I ended up curating events, figuring out who are the right people, suggesting folks, moderating, being on panels. And uh, the more good you do, apparently, the more doors open. So I've been very fortunate to be invited to a variety of events that are happening in the Davos week um, in January. And I'm um, just always happy to open the doors for others and connect partly portfolio companies, projects we are believing in, and just sometimes it's just great people. So we uh, sponsor nonprofit organizations. Like one year we had uh, Global Dignity that is focusing on, um, is, is focusing on educating teenagers, children, and educators around the world of how important respect and dignity is. It's uh, Desmond Tutu is one of the sponsors, uh, Trudeau, Benson, a bunch of people behind there. So we helped them to have a successful engagement in the Davos environment. Last year, we sponsored First Uprising. That's Alexander Vodanosovar's organization, young leaders that are thinking we have to change how we protect our world and our environment, um, making sure that um, we are responsible stewards of our planet, not only for ourselves, but also for but also for our children. Yeah, and this is actually the key element right now for anything we're going to do, and I think especially is going to be more important now. Let me go right now to some broader questions related with your research and the different areas how you approach the theory and the practice. So mm -hmm. one of the questions I have, and I think it's a particular important one for me, and so I think with you would be the right person to answer that, is that like we discussed before, we're going through a huge um, phase of complexification of anything that is about technology and business. And mm -hmm. part of uh, your work and mine is precisely demystifying these concepts and finding solutions around these concepts. So one of the challenge is that in one end, these technologies are becoming easier to use. Um, but in one end, in another end, they're creating a lot of disturbance, especially right now with the AI chatbots like the, the, the chat GPT and all these things from the open AI. But as well on blockchain, we just mentioned all the disruption about FTX. Mm -hmm. um, there's the disruption around even creating ID uh, and look at what has been happening, for instance, with Twitter, um, what is going to happen. But I think 2023 is going to be probably an interesting and challenging year because in one end, uh, there are some studies saying for instance, there's only 350 million people using kind of cryptocurrencies in a kind of a daily day-to-day -day people like us. And probably you and me are probably part of the 1% or even less. But the challenge right now is that we might get 800 million people using crypto. Uh, that's more or less the studies that we say, independent of all the crypto winter, because this is a lot of solutions. And at the same time, all these kind of areas around the AI, 
are creating, and you are a teacher as well, are creating a huge disruption, even for people like me and you. I think if you use the open AI tools, you, you get completely overwhelmed with what you can get out of there. So how do you see this complexification? And I think the, uh, sorry, this is a big question, but I have to explain it right. The challenge I'm facing, um, both with my own teams and as well with uh, speaking with a lot of industry experts is that like you have uh, been advising a lot of governments. And when I speak with governments, first of all, I still have to spend quite significant efforts explaining what is blockchain, mm -hmm. um, how does it work, why it matters. And some governments are still trying to no, no, I don't want to believe it. It's bad. Um, and others are are uh, embracing it. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to AI, so the velocity, there's a, there's a complex, the, the keywords here are complexity, velocity, and then trust and how to use these things. Because this, this is the challenge that I'm facing is that the people or become cynic because, okay, it's much easier to say that everything is corrupt, everything is about data and everything is bad. Uh, or then, okay, yeah, why why we should use this? Or then I really don't understand anything. Or then we have companies that are disrupting entire other companies. And for us right now, we might even have Google being disrupted by their own <laughs> uh, technologies as well. So how do you see this? And how do you look at this from a perspective? And I know that you're very practical as well uh, for people listening to us. Because I think that's probably the biggest challenge of 2023. Uh, I think it's, yeah, you are completely right, Dennis. It's a huge challenge for 23. It was in 22 and it will be in 24. Um, I think education is one of the cornerstones, ongoing education that will help. Education on all levels. It's It starts in early in school, um, universities, day-to-day -day educating our politicians, our business leaders, um, continue to have those conversations, taking concerns seriously, making sure we are listening and see what's possible, and then experimenting. Um, I think uh, I'm a member of the IFIP, that's the organization focusing on education for IT professionals. And uh, just this morning, um, one of my, uh, where is this? Robin, one of the other members, Robin Reskin, who is uh, in the industry as, an, as a journalist forever, used uh, the AI to write a poem for the new year. Another member, and send it out to us as the council member. Another council member took that poem, gave it to one of his portfolio companies to turn it into an animated video of Robin giving the speech of her AI generated poem in a video format with animations on the side. And it didn't take a lot of time. I don't think it's online, but it's just such a fantastic experience to see how people actually play with the technology, see what it can do for them, and uh, and and being amazed. And then you start to imagine what's possible. On the digital currency side, I usually, I mean, we have done this early enough, like give people a, install a Bitcoin wallet, like uh, uh, on their phone and send a little bit of uh, currency back and forth and see how easy it can be. Um, people that have been growing up in China, they have been growing up with the WeChat and Alipay and the QR code scanning for a longer time. So they are more familiar with some of some of these technologies work than, than people that have swiped their credit card for all their lives. But it's just picking up people where they are, explaining it to them in their language and uh, taking concerns very, very seriously. I mean, if somebody raises a concern, it means they actually care. They want to know. So, and if they are open to learning, that's a starting point for a conversation. Yeah, that's uh, that's probably the most important thing right now is, is this kind of conversations are really more important than ever. Uh, so how do you see the World Economic Forum and these organizations to actually tackle these issues? Because I think that right now, that's really definitely a big challenge that um, I know that the United States is calmer, at least with the present administration, at least a bit more calmer. Uh, but there's a lot of tackling yeah. issues because you mentioned China, but China is going through a lot of challenging mm -hmm. things. There's, of yeah. course, all the issues with India that is becoming, by 2050, I think, the second economy in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and as well, even the innovation in the United States is not changing the United States. So yeah. you're going to see geopolitical um, mm -hmm. massive changes and technology the changes will not stop and actually they're going to be disrupting and not everything depends on people like us but at the same time depends as well how we frame these technologies and how we actually use it for our own sake not the other way around 
Now, I think it's about, uh, again, creating clarity, education, and creating frameworks where people can find themselves and their history and their knowledge and expertise in as well. Uh, the World Economic Forum, well, the Sustainable Development Goals, I said I have to put this on, I guess, here, the little thing here. Uh, I'll take that so to Davos, but um, it really looks at the world with, around key challenges, if it's education, if it's energy, um, if it's equity, looking at all of these pieces, both together, but also do the as an individual lens helps to understand the bigger picture and bringing things together and uncovering, I think, synergies between different areas. Uh, there is, is a, between energy decentralization and blockchain technology. Those could be things. Education we talked about. New financial access to financial systems brings economic development. I think I mentioned briefly earlier the Indonesian rice farmers that do not have an identity, a bank account, and therefore no opportunity to do crop insurance. Something that is for farmers in uh, the US or in Western Europe, a normal thing to have. So if they have a failed crop, they don't have to starve. In a lot of areas of the world, that's just not possible because the infrastructure is not there to even create those kind of insurance systems. And I think uh, looking at it from all of those different pieces, taking this and bringing them together, I think can help us to build step-by-step -step a better future for humanity.